let's really quickly, I want to hit three important aspects of public speaking. But before we do that, while it's fresh in our minds, let's analyze what these two guys did. They're gone so we can speak freely, okay? <laughs> John, a comment. Uh, Jimmy Williams, the first uh, speaker, had some great body movement, I think. Mm -hmm. At least it was really appropriate for the type of speech he was giving. Bingo. I've got the same thing on my analysis. Jimmy walked around, and he walked up and looked at people, whereas Corey kind of stayed stationary. Yes. I think that Corey had a great uh, visual content. Yes. He, in fact, he came up and looked right at yeah. individuals <laughs> as a, uh, in addition to looking at the whole group constantly. Jimmy pretty well scanned the whole group the whole time, rather than looking at in individuals. Comment? No. <laughs> okay. What about their? Uh, go ahead. One, one question: Like, what do we recommend to do if you're like speaking to like focus your like type of person or like to? Now the key, the, the key, you do two things with your eyes. Um, three things actually. You never lose contact with the audience. Never, 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 never. You don't do this. See that? I lost contact with the audience. I looked down at my notes. And I, you don't do this. Look back at your PowerPoint slide. What you do, you do three things. Number one, you always keep your eye on the audience. Number two, you sweep like a searchlight. See, if I'm looking at John, I, I can't look over this way at Robbie. So you sweep back and forth. And what Corey did, as you pointed out, is not a bad idea. Sometimes you focus on an individual. And so you do all three of those things. Never lose eye contact, sweep like a searchlight, and focus on individuals when it's appropriate. And I think uh, they had, we had a mixture of these two, two uh, eye contact practices with the two people, don't you think? Okay, how'd they do on volume? How was their volume? I'd say both were fairly low. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think uh, they could Corey, Corey spoke more softly than Jimmy did, uh, but both of them varied it a little yeah. bit. And both of them, I think, had the appropriate volume for this room. Could y'all hear them okay in the back? Okay, and we can certainly hear them in the front. So the volume was appropriate. I think they, both of them could have varied the volume a little more. Corey did at the end, when he, when he was moving in to close it, and, and so did Jimmy. Both of them got down soft and personal at the end of their presentation. That's what you want to do, you want to vary the volume. Uh, speed of delivery, how did they do? Jimmy was a little bit fast. Yeah, Jimmy was a little fast. He slowed down at the end, and he slowed down at some place in the middle. I forget where. But in general, he was like mm -hmm. drinking from a fire hose, man. It was just coming out. And I think Corey perhaps was the other way. Do you think? Corey was really mm -hmm. slow. He talked uh, slightly. And Corey used a lot of pauses, which added to the slowness. And so probably Jimmy could have been better if he had varied it and spoken less fast. And Corey could have been better, I think, if he had speeded up a little. But, but you do want to vary it. Sometimes you want to talk real fast like this because it conveys excitement. And then sometimes when it's important, you talk very slow and deliberately. Okay, now you tell me, what are the two things that are important about speed of delivery? I've just told you. Regurgitated to me. Should be varied. Should be varied. You, 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 you should be varied, and you shouldn't be too fast or too slow consistently. You don't want to keep the same pace the whole time. Just, just vary it in, in, in and out. Now, pauses. Both of them had pauses. I think Corey had more pauses than Jimmy. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, what about? I only noticed among the two of them one verbal distraction. Did you notice? Let's see. No, no. Corey, Corey had. Uh, who's the er counter? Do we have an er counter? How many errs did each of them give? How many? For who? Which one? Okay, I, I counted uh, three for Corey, and how many did you count for Jimmy? I didn't count any for Jimmy either. Right? He didn't give any, any errs. I mean, he was like a machine gun. Whole time. Okay, so pretty good. Eye contact, pretty, slow. pretty <laughs> constant the whole time. Uh, attire, appearance, they were jam up really tight, both of them. <laughs> the hand gestures, how were their gestures? Good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, uh, quiz, quiz question, <laughs> you can see the answer. What are two types of gestures? Uh, two uh, types of gestures. Within your, within your torso, these are called subdued. 
Outside your torso, those are dramatic. What were most of Corey's gestures? So do they were right in here. What about Jimmy? Mostly subdued, Mostly but he got outside a little bit. Okay, what, and subdued are just, you use just for normal talking, but you use dramatic when you really want to emphasize it. And you've learned this, but regurgitate it to me. There's two aspects of speaking. Part, well, I'll tell you, part is verbal and part is visual. And, and the thing we talk about gestures now, that's visual. Sports fans, if you give a speech without doing the visual, you're missing half of it. Giving a speech without doing all the visual stuff is like strapping on ankle weights and trying to go compete in a race. Now, there, there, there are really good speeches given with very little bit visual. And Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech is one of them. He stands behind the podium. But he's so incredible in two other ways. He's so incredible with his verbal that it makes up for it. And then there's another aspect of speaking, style and substance. Style is how you present it, and substance is what you say. And Martin Luther King is so incredible on substance that the fact that he has great substance and great verbal, that makes up for the fact he has no visual. And when Obama gave the uh, victory speech in Chicago, he did the same thing. He didn't do much visual but his content, his substance, and his verbal was so powerful that that compensated for it. We mere mortals, <laughs> in order to get all the impact we can out of a speech, need to do all of that. You know, we need to have visual and verbal. 